Hey, hey, you guys. Gonna wait a few minutes. I want a few of you guys pop up here before I start. As y'all know, I do not like to talk to myself. So, let me get it together. Good morning, party people. Almost a new year. I am ready, ready for it. So, anybody waiting, and hopefully I'm on the right page. If you guys watch the replay, I know some of you guys are at work, most of you guys are at work, do hashtag replay, but if you pop up here, I see an I. If you pop up here, speak to me, speak to me. Good morning, good morning. How was your Christmas? I'm going to share some tidbits with you guys this morning. I'm going to put this on YouTube so you can share it with your teams. I've been trying to go live every day this week with just how I'm preparing for 2021. Preparing my office, preparing my, preparing my business, preparing my personal life. So, I did most of those live videos on my team page, but I put them on YouTube so you guys can share them with your teams and get them prepared and get them excited. Um, because 2021 is going to be an exciting one. Good morning, Sonia. Good morning, Abby. So, I'm going to hop right into it. I uploaded um, the system that I use to work my personal business. Now, obviously, I really want you, as I talk through running a personal bar report for your personal business. As I show you guys how to do that for your personal business, I really want you guys, when you hear the word system, to kind of switch it. Because when we, I think when people hear system, they get freaked out. Instead, think about how you how you want to work. Um, what? How does your brain work? Good morning, Krista. Good morning, Alyssa. How does your brain work? For me, I'm a checklist person. I'm like that in my everyday life. And every time I veer from my checklist system, I get very, very overwhelmed and I fall off and my business isn't um, balanced and I'm all over the place because I'm a checklist person. I'm like that in my every single day life outside of Sensi. I'm very much a list um, person. That's how my brain functions. My brain also functions by focusing on one thing a day. Like if I'm all over the place, if I'm trying to do a million things, nothing gets done. My brain doesn't function like that. My brain works best if I focus on one thing and I can do that one thing very, very well. So before I uploaded the systems, the system that I'm going to use for my personal business, um, I've used this system for three years now, um, but I sat down and revised it yesterday to take things off that are on a priority that don't make me money, right? There's 24 hours in a day. We all have the same 24 hours. Most of us are moms. Some of you guys work full-time. You're a wife. Time is precious, and focusing your time on the right things is what's going to make all the difference and the biggest impact in your business. So, before I even talk about this system, how do you know what area of your business you need to focus on going into 2021? For me, I like to do the things that I don't enjoy doing early in the week. Because, you are like me, let's say you have a sink full of dishes. And I don't do this because I'm a little OCD and they got to be done. But, if I absolutely hated doing them, I would say, I'll do them tomorrow. Then tomorrow will come. <laughs> I don't feel like doing it today. I'm going to do it tomorrow. And tomorrow never comes. Same thing with your business. Oftentimes... If people don't enjoy having sponsoring conversations because they're uncomfortable, they don't do them. They push them off. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it Thursday. I'll do it Friday. They push them off and keep pushing them off, and then it never happens because it's uncomfortable, right? Um, so think about when I show you how to run your personal bar report, you're going to do this through your workstation on your workstation. The things that you don't necessarily enjoy doing in your business but are necessary for growth, this bar report is going to show you where you're at in your business and what you're consistent in and what you're not consistent in. And it will kind of show you 
how to revise the way that you work going into 2021. So I'm going to flip this around for you guys. So you're going to log into your workstation. So when you log into your workstation, let me fix this because it's a little bit glary. When you log into your work, workstation, you're going to be on your home screen. You're going to go to the reporting tab. You're going to go to sales report. You're going to hit sales report. <laughs> My computer is slow as molasses, y'all. I live in the middle of nowhere, so bear with me. It does take a few seconds to load this page, but it's loading because it's a lot of information on this page. And I probably should have had it pulled up for y'all. Sorry. So, you're going to see Business Analysis Report or the Bar Report, B-A-R. You're going to hit View. This is going to show you from the time that you've been a consultant, the mo month that you were a consultant, that you started this journey. So, mine goes back to 2017. It's going to show you month after month, and I'll show you in a minute. It's not just going to show you your stats either. It's going to show you the stats of your team, the stats of your group if you're a director and you have a director underneath of you. Um, so, see, okay, the month I joined, you're going to see my PRV from 2017 all the way down to this year. Now, it is missing November and December, so it's kind of annoying, but support is closed, so that data is not available November and this month. Um, but it's going to show you your PRV month after month. It's going to show you a total at the end of the year. What did you sell in a total year? It's going to show you your TWV, your GWV, um, your group. So, everybody in your entire group, people that you've sponsored, they've sponsored, so on and so forth. Um, and how many recruits you've had. How many recruits you've had in a single year. So, it breaks it down by month and then it gives you an over year total. So, you can see the first year that I joined, my PRV the first two months was hit and miss. But, ever since April of the year that I joined, April 2017, my PRV has never been lower than 2000 ever. I figured out quickly the higher my PRV is, the higher my paycheck was. So, you can also see, do I consistently sponsor? Have I consistently sponsored since I've been a consultant? For the most part, I have sponsored, look at this column right here, new recruits. I have sponsored every single month for the most part. There was one month in 2018 that I didn't sponsor. There was... Two months and two, three months in 2019, I didn't sponsor. And then this year, I sponsored every single month. So you can kind of see when I look at this, when I pull my personal bar report, I'm looking at was my PRV consistent? Has it been consistent? Have I sponsored consistently? I sponsored 28 people. I actually sponsored 32 people because November's and December's is not updated. Um, have I consistently sponsored? The other thing is, if you are a lead, you're, you're leading above because you're on this page, I'm going to go to this tab right here, promotions for team, and I want to look out of my team, not only am I sponsoring, but is my team promoting? Because it doesn't matter if you sponsor 50 people, if they, if we're not coaching them to find success, if we're not coaching them in the right areas of their business, it really doesn't matter if you sponsor 50, 50 people if they don't do anything. So, when I look at this from a leadership standpoint, is my team promoting? Are they performing? So, 71 people promoted to certified, 27 to lead, 12 to star, 6 to superstar. Um, and it doesn't show directors because once you become a director, you kind of part from your director's team. But this is our overall group bar report. So look at this. 867 uh, certified. 275 lead. 153 star. 48 SSC. 40 directors. 7 star directors. 
So you can kind of see when you pull this report, whether you're a new, newer consultant or you've been here for a while, it's going to break down what you do per month. What are you doing per month? At, at a year's glance, what was, was my PRV consistently where I want it to be? I want you to ask yourself when you pull your bar report. Is your PRV consistently where you want it to be? And if the answer is no, when you think about how you want to work going into 2021, you need to be thinking about follow-ups and parties to grow your customer base to get that PRV higher. If you want to focus on sponsoring and you haven't been consistent when you look at this column and you have a lot of zeros and you haven't been consistent in sponsoring, going into 2021, I want you to think about how you want to have sponsoring conversations. Do you see this last year? Last year, we had two, we had two specials. That's why I sponsored 10 people. We had that $15 special last year. Most of these people didn't absolutely nothing. The 20 people did absolutely nothing. But look at these. Zero, zero, zero. So when I did this bar report last year, I said to myself, I'm not sponsoring. Yeah, I have a 36, but they're not performing. I'm not sponsoring the right people. Going into 2020, what I started doing to help this column to sponsor consistently and sponsor the right people one of the things that I did, and you can find this in Guide to Growth in the Google form. I'm not going to go over this. But one of the one, the things that I started doing was sticking this in every single package. Showing them what they would have made off of their own purchases. This started the conversation of sponsoring for me. So when I started doing this, it was because I ran the bar report last year. And I sat down and I said, I'm not consistent in this area. What can I do to be more consistent in having sponsoring conversations and being intentional with my customers when I have these conversations? So I started implementing this into my business. So when you're looking at your bar report, when you're looking at sponsoring, what can you do in your personal business to PRV is always the first leg. So Sensi Club, follow-up system, booking parties, all of those are going to help with your PRV leg. If you're um, deficient in sponsoring, trying new things, learning about new things. Here's one thing I really want you guys to think about going into this year. When you look at your personal bar report and you say, mm, I ain't doing too hot in this area. Or I'm up, down, up, down, up, down. I'm up, down. But I'm not consistent in this area. It's, it's up and down. What can I do to be consistent? Because consistency is what creates growth. So when you look at your bar when you look at your personal bar report and if you're up and down, that means you're not consistent. That means what you're doing is not consistent. You're either on fire one month or you do your follow-ups one month or you're booking parties one month and then you're not. Coming up with a system or the way that you work to help you be consistent in the areas that you want to be better at. The other thing is, if there's an area when you're looking at your bar report, if you're struggling with PRV, if you're struggling with recruiting, if you're struggling with your team performing or um, promoting, that's the three legs of success, right? PRV, sponsoring, and coaching. So if your areas are deficient or they're not where you want them to be or they're up and down, I'm going to encourage you to study and learn more about that particular area. There's knowledge. There, there's growth in knowledge. There's power in knowledge. Meaning, if you're struggling in PRV, don't stay there. If you're struggling in sponsoring, don't stay there. Don't struggle in 2021. If there's an area, when you look at this, and you say, I am consistently not doing well in this area. I need to learn more about this area so I can get more comfortable. But hear me, you're not going to get comfortable until you get uncomfortable. You have to get uncomfortable. For me, it's not comfortable having sponsoring conversations. I still get nervous. I still worry about what they say. So I know going into 2021, I need to get uh, I need to fall in love with being uncomfortable. Cuz I'm not going to get comfortable until I start getting uncomfortable in that area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start watching trainings on how to sponsor. 
there's power in knowledge and there's a freshness when you learn about areas that you're struggling in. So when I ran this bar report, I said to myself, what do I want to work at going into 2021? My PRV is consistently high, so I don't want to focus on PRV going into 2021. For me, PR, my personal PRV is consistently between $7,000 and $10,000 a month. But that's because I consistently party and I consistently follow up. So my focus going into 2021 is sponsoring those people that are getting me that $7,000, 8,000, 9,000 PRV is having conversations with them for them to join so I can start sponsoring heavy. So when I ran my bar report and I reflected on my personal business, what do I want to focus on? I want to focus on sponsoring and I want to focus on coaching more and being intentional with my time, being intentional with the way I work with my team, the, being intentional with the way I look, work with my leaders. So when I came up with my checklist, and you guys can see this in the files tab, I've uploaded it. You can edit this. This is an editable file. file. So what doesn't apply to you, you can take off because I do have a lot of, a lot of leadership things because I do have a lot of directors in my stewardship. Um, I have anywhere between five and seven tasks a day. And it's very, very, very focused. So I ran my bar report. I said I want to focus on these areas going into 2021. So Mondays is all about building relationships with my frontline to get parties booked. I'm the, I follow up. I do. I follow up almost every single day, y'all, because I do have the Amy app. That works for me. May not work for you. Again, I'm a checklist person. That's the way my head works. So think about the way that you learn and the way you want to work. If lists drive you nuts, this isn't going to work for you. So develop something that's going to work for you after you run your bar report to see what you even need to work on. If you have PRV over five, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollars every month, your PRV gain is pretty strong. You probably need to work on another leg of of the stool. PRV always needs to be first, always. And if you're a leader or above, I'm going to encourage you to push for twenty five hundred dollars a month, two thousand five hundred PRV a month. Why? 2,000 PRV automatically gets you a $600 paycheck off PRV alone, not even leadership bonuses. But 2,500 PRV a month sets you up to earn annual sales. If you set your goal for that, 2,500 PRV a month, break that up into follow-ups, parties, the things that you do for, for PRV, you're going to earn annual sales automatically. So... Small things, little ripples create big waves. So, Tuesdays, I'm fo focusing solely on my team. I'm doing a training on either my team page or the leadership page. Texting downline, that's not in my front line. Recognition on team page, leadership page. Asking my team to do a live. So, after I do recognition, I'm going to say, hey, you're great at PRV. Why don't you pop on our team page and talk about PRV, right? Because there's no I in team. You want to build leaders. As a leader, you want to build leaders. The only way you're going to build leaders is to pull that out of people. Um, check in on my personally sponsored teamies who are still in their sensational start period. It's crucial. It's crucial to walk them through sensational start. There is a study. Don't ask me the statistics because I don't know off the top of my head. Are you kidding? I barely know my name right now. Um, but people that earn shooting star and sensational start, there is a correlation between, um, retention and them earning those awards, them doing well and promoting quickly if they earn those awards. So I followed my people closely in their first 70 days. Wednesdays is all about partying and follow-ups because I do them both. So I don't do them separate. When I follow up with people, I have the party conversation or the sponsoring conversation. I don't just follow up. I follow up with a with a purpose. When I follow up, hey, how did you like your uh, washer whiffs? And she says, oh, I love them so much. I'm gonna say, girl, don't you want to try and get a tub for free? Party. Or Girl, you've bought a lot of washer whiffs for me in the last three months. You should probably get paid off of these washer whiffs. That's how I follow up. So, Wednesdays is all about partying. Thursdays is all about sponsoring. 
that's talking to people I've talked to in the past about sponsoring. It's talking to new people about joining. It's posting on Facebook, Instagram, in my stories about the opportunity, sharing the opportunity or sharing how it's blessed my life because people watch you, whether you think it or not, they're watching you. Um, post a training on my team page about sponsoring and offer it, offering a discounted kit to one customer. I'm going to do that every Thursday. Friday, checking on my directors, posting in my VIP page, follow-ups, and send mail outs to my PWS orders and tie up any loose ends that I have. So that's my Monday through Friday checklist. Obviously, you can edit this if this does some of it doesn't apply to you. But for me, focusing on one area of my business a day will keep me from getting overwhelmed. Because think, in between all this, I'm going to get Facebook messages, text messages. My kids probably going to be crazy. We're going to be watching Blippy, and I cannot, I can't take it. I cannot take Blippy. Cannot take it. And I'm going to get sidetracked because that's just what I do. That's the type of human I am. I'm going to get sidetracked. And then I'm going to veer from this checklist. And then when it's time to get back to work, I'm going to be like, what was I doing? And if I'm trying to do a mean things, ain't nothing going to get done. Ain't nothing going to get done, okay? So I want you to pull your bar report first. And then think about how does your brain work? Maybe your brain works. I, I went through this. I'm very open with my with my mental health, with anxiety and depression. Um, in March, April, and May, I struggled more than I ever have with anxiety and depression. And nothing... I'm coming, baby. Come back here. Okay, I'll be there in a minute. King Aiden, I'll be there in a minute. I'm on the phone, baby. I struggled more than I've ever had with anxiety and depression. And nothing triggered it. That was that was a bad thing. Like if you asked me, hey, what was what's wrong? Nothing was wrong, which made me feel even worse. But my brain was not in a good place. Most people would have put their kit down if they were going through what I went. It was so bad that my husband finally said, You need to go get you need to go we need to go get you some help because you're not okay and you're trying to pretend you're okay and you're not okay and that drives him nuts. So anyway, so May, June, and July, I had to completely not do this. Completely not. This, when I would look at this, I, I would automatically feel like an elephant was on my chest. So, for a few months, I only did one thing a day. One thing. And it could be Monday, follow-ups. Follow up with a few of your customers. Tuesdays, check in on a couple of your teammates. Wednesdays, book one party. Thursday, have one sponsoring conversation. And that's the best that I could do at that time. Okay, baby. That was the best that I could do at the time. So, I want you to hear me. If what you're doing right now isn't working, you have permission to change it. You have permission to work the way that you want to work. You don't have to do this. If this, if you look at this and you're like, mm -mm, Katie, ain't no way in hell I can do that. That's enough to make drive you you're nuts. This is how I work in my life too. Checklist. That's my husband. The checklist on the refrigerator. He got to get done and he ain't done yet. But it's fine. It's fine. Think about how you work. Maybe you work crazy hours and all you can do is one thing a day. Then do one thing a day. But make that one thing income producing. Make that one thing impact your business. Because here's the thing. That one sponsoring conversation once a week, that's 52 sponsoring conversations a year. That one party that you book a week, that's 52 parties a year. So, I mean, those that doesn't sound like a lot, but here I hear so many people say it's either all or none. They're either all in and they go big and they go ham and then they fall off. Here's the thing. Slow and steady rate wins the race. If you're like this, and you can tell if you're like this, if you're going to look at your bar report, you're going to tell if you're like this. If you're like this, I want you to have an honest conversation with yourself. You're not consistent. And it's okay to say, you know what? I'm not consistent. It's okay. I say that I want, want it. I say I want to do better, but I'm really not doing anything about it. I want you to have that honest conversation with yourself. If you look at this bar report because it doesn't lie, you know, some of us lie to ourselves 
and say, I'm having sponsoring conversation, but you pull this bar report and you ain't sponsoring nobody in three years, you're not, boo. Come on, be honest with yourself. If you're like this, you're not consistent. And that's okay. You can change it. Don't sit there, though. Don't sit there. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're someone like me, you know. I'm very, very, I keep a lot of stuff in, inside and I don't share a lot. I need to share more about some of the things that I go through. Because people look at me and say, Katie, you got it all together. You don't understand. No, boo. <laughs> you don't understand. Okay. You don't understand. We all go through things. We all go through hard things. One thing that I have made it since I joined four years ago it has made sure that every day I touch my business in some way. I treat this business, it's non-negotiable for me not to work my business. At least one thing a day. One thing a day. Because I know those small things add up. And when you do those small things consistently, it will change your business. And when it changes your business, it changes your life. So, pull your bar report. There is a ton of systems out there that are already created. But if none of them suit your fancy, create your own. Create your own. For a while, my system was a sticky note with one thing on it. Sunday, or the night before I would go to bed, I would say, what do I want to do tomorrow? What do I, what can I do tomorrow? What can I muster up strength to do tomorrow? And I would write down, do five follow-ups tomorrow. And I would take the sticky note and say, five follow-ups. And I would stick it on my, I'm a planner girl. Some of y'all technology, hats off to your girl is not, okay. I can't even figure out how to get this screen saver of my husband off my computer. I have to Google how to use technology. It's not natural to me. One of my goals this year was to get familiar with Instagram. If you're on Instagram, go look at my Instagram. I did not have an Instagram last January. I, I take it back. I had one, but I had no idea how to use it. Um, I kept asking him, like, how do I get people up here? And he's like, what? I said, how do I get people up here? He said, you mean follow people? Yeah, I'm like, how you, how you do that? Where you find the people at? The struggle was real. But one of my goals this year was to get better at social media because I sucked at it. Um, if I if it was up to me, I would delete social media tomorrow. But I know the impact that it has on my business. So, I could have either said, you suck at it, so stop. Or I could say, no, you suck at it, you need to get better. And I'm going to tell you, girl, it was not cute a year ago, okay? It was just not cute. My social media was not cute. It wasn't until I became comfortable with being me and being comfortable in my own skin and doing it because it was so awkward, y'all. When I would do stories and talk to myself, I'm like, this is weird AF. Like, talking to myself is weird. But the more I did it, the better I got at it. The more I learned about it and I watched podcasts about it and I watched trainings about it, the more comfortable I got with it. It's just like this business. If you don't particularly enjoy having sponsoring conversations, you either have two choices. Not do it, and if you don't, you're not going to grow, or learn more about it and get better at it. you got to get uncomfortable in order to get comfortable. It was a hot mess express, y'all. But when I look at it, I said, get familiar with Instagram. I'm proud of myself for how far I came a year ago. I had like three, I guess, decom friends or followers, I don't know, last January. Three. Three. And one of them was my husband and one was my mom. It's real sad my mom knows how to work Instagram and I don't. But I got better at it. You have two choices in life. You can either not like it so not do it or get better at it. Decide what's a necessity. I'm coming, <laughs> sugar britches. I'm coming, baby. Decide what gets better. But for me, last year was a very hard year for me. So my system was... One thing, on my planner. And when I would get up and after I would get Aiden straight and get my life together and, and get out of my pity party for a little bit, I would do that one thing. I did one thing a day for three months because that's all I had. Did people want more out of me? Yeah, absolutely. I had directors want more out of me. I had leaders want more out of me. Teammates want more out of me. Customers want more out of me. But that's all I could give. You can't give what you don't have. 
You can't give what you don't have. Baby, come here. I cannot stand it when he yells at me across the room like I'm a dog. Um, you can't give what you don't have. So, one thing that I took from, from this year is I can't give and pour into other people if I'm not taking care of myself. And when I started taking care of myself in July, August, when I started really feeding my mind the good stuff and um, I did start seeing a counselor and I had a lot of, a lot of things from my past band-aids were ripped off and I was not ready to deal with it but I was forced to deal with them um there's a lot of hurt a lot of pain um and I'm one of those people that can smile and laugh through it all but it was hard it was hard for me to live nevertheless work my business real talk but I know what this business does for my life so I had to make a decision that it's non-negotiable about how I feel. I need to get it together. And though I may not be able to give 100%, I can give 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%. Every day, the percentage was different. But when I started taking care of myself, my mind, body, and soul, that's when I could start pouring into people. And pouring. People wonder why I stopped doing coaching calls. I couldn't give, I couldn't give to y'all. How am I going to help you when I can't help myself? That would be leading in vain. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Sometimes the best that you guys got was a post because that's all I had to give. And that's okay. I had to be okay with that. And I wasn't because I had myself set up. I put myself... Are you okay, baby? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have high expectations for myself that when I didn't meet those expectations, I didn't give myself grace. Instead, I would beat myself up. It wasn't until I realized, you need to give yourself grace, girl. You're a mom. You're also a mom. You're also a wife. You also have a booming business and customers you're taking care of and a team you're taking care of. You weren't designed to do it all. That's why this year, my word's grace. Giving myself grace. Giving people grace. Lowering my expectations of myself because not super, you're not a superhero. So, think about run your bar report. What do you need to work in going, going on to 2021? What do you need to work in on? What area do you want to work on? Um, you, you have to love yourself. Because here's the thing. For a lot of my life, I never felt good enough or worthy enough. I always took a back seat to everybody else because I never thought that I was good enough. And it wasn't until... God is such a jokester. He really is a trickster. It wasn't until I had all that happen between March and May... Um. That I could feel him saying, just be yourself. Why do you always have to be brave? Why do you always have to have it together? Why do you always have to laugh? Why do you always have to smile? Why can't you just feel what you're feeling and not feel bad about it? Stop saying you're sorry to people. They want coaching calls and you tell them no. And then you say, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And you eat yourself up because they want it and you can't give it to them. Or that customer that wants you to meet them at this time and you already have plans. It wasn't until, say, I, I'm a firm believer that God will make you go through things. And you will always come out out of it better. And it wasn't until I went through that period between March and May of struggling that I realized I can be me. Unapologetically me. I'm allowed to have a bad day. I'm allowed to have a crappy attitude when I'm in my fields. Don't post it on social media. But I'm allowed to say, Ray Ray knows this, if, if, and Chloe knows this. If I have a bad day and we have a group chat, chat if I'm in a bad mood, I'll just say, I love y'all, but I can't talk to y'all today because I'm going <laughs> to rub my bad mood off on y'all. So, just not going to do it today. I'll get it together tomorrow. It wasn't, come here, baby. 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 Ooh, grumpy gills. Grumpy gills. It wasn't until 
I started. Jacob. You're so welcome. <laughs> it wasn't until I became comfortable with being myself that my business really started to grow. Being authentically me on social media, being all sides of me, not just the happy one that posts the memes and the corny jokes. But being authentically me and not worrying about what other people do. If you look at people's social media and you automatically feel like you're comparing yourself, unfollow them. If you look at my social media and you're like, God, I can never do what Katie does, unfollow me. Because it's not healthy. It's not. At the end of the day, people want to host, buy, and join from you. From you. Not from anybody else. But if you're putting on a fake persona... Or you're trying to be like somebody else. Your business isn't going to grow. Because it's going to be so uncomfortable for you to deal. To balance that. To balance being two different people. Stop. Be you and be authentically you. Have joy in your journey. Remember why you started. All the resources you need to be successful are out there. It's all in your hands. It's all in your hands. Focus on the right things. Don't need a lot of time to work this business. Focus on the right things with the time that you do have. And be unapologetically and authentically you. That's why one of our core values is authenticity. Generosity. What do you say? Peace. <laughs> Y'all see, I'm just a snack opener in the Capri I put it in the face. You put it? Okay. All right. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I love you guys. I hope this was helpful. The rambling at the end had nothing to do with systems or bar reports. But I want to see what y'all come up with. Run your bar report. I already have something printed to share with my customers, my personal bar report for our entire group. Um, I want to see what you come up with. Remember, if it overwhelms you, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. So, don't trick yourself either to say, oh my God, I can do all these things. And if you look at it and you're like, I'm very overwhelmed looking at this, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it if you're overwhelmed. Most people stop instead of condensing. Instead of condensing. And just remember, what you don't get done today, there's always tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. Okay? I love y'all. I hope y'all have a great day. And I will post this recording on YouTube so you guys can share it with your team so they can do the same thing and prepare for 2021. I'm so freaking excited to see y'all rise and y'all blossom and you grow and you chase your dreams using Sensi as a vessel going into 2021. I'm pumped for it. I love y'all. Y'all have a great day. Bye.